Jeanette Wood writes on Twitter, your Emus tutorials are my training in a new role at the moment. Thank you, they are so helpful. Well, if people are using my Emus web tutorials as their induction into new roles and practices, why don't we do this properly? Whether you are a locum, a new starter, or a practice manager who wouldn't mind a freebie as part of the induction of their new staff, prepare to be initiated. Before we start, we will assume that someone has helped you out with logins and things. Let's start with the home page. This is where the fun begins, and this is where you can go if you are feeling lost or lonely. The icons at the top left of the page are super important, and you might need to add some missing ones before you start. And you can easily do this by clicking on the arrows on the right hand side. Customize quick access toolbar. Just click on this. Now on the right hand side, these are the ones that you absolutely need to have. Add task, appointment book, consultations, diary, investigations, medication, problems, and summary. And the way to move these over is you just click on the one you want, click on add. Now in this case, I don't really want care history there, so I'm just going to remove it. Click OK. Now all of the icons are there, the ones that are always there by default. Back. Home, screen messages, which are really fun to use and are non-auditable. Now you'll see right next to it, there's something called appointment book. And this is the second page that is super important. Click on that. And this will show you the patients that are booked in for any given day. Now, as you can see, there's a calendar here. And if you want to know who's booked in for today, just click on today. And there's my clinic. Now, if you're not seeing anything, it might be that you have to add yourself as a session holder right here. Make sure you click on quick pick and just put in your details. So if I search for Poplowski, which is my last name, there I am, I just have to double click here, right, and click OK. Now you will have to find out from the practice manager what they called you. I mean, you might be down here as a locum, nope, a salaried, nope, a random doctor, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Doctor Unknown, that might be you. Right, and here's the list of patients that I need to see today. Now, if the appointment is a face-to-face -face consultation, when the patient comes to see the receptionist, they will arrive the patient. And you will see that on your screen with a little A that is right next to the patient's name. As you can see on the top right-hand corner, it says patient waiting one. That can get a little bit stressful if there are like five patients waiting for you. So just watch out for that one. Now, if you want to start seeing the patient, you need to send them in. And the best way to do that is simply by clicking the S key. And now the patient details have loaded at the top. So you have the name, date of birth, usual GP, gender, and NHS number. Obviously, you can't see this because this is a real patient. Now let's get into the fun bit. You have to start your consultation. Go to the icon that says consultations and click on that. Now this is a list of all the consultations that that patient has had. And you can easily view everything by just scrolling down. When you have familiarized yourself with the patient history, click on add. That will automatically load up a patient consultation. Click OK. All right, let's bring this down a bit. And this is where all the data input happens. Before you start, personally, I would make sure that you are choosing the right consultation type. So if you go up here and click on the arrow, you'll be able to choose, is this a telephone consultation? Are you seeing the patient in the GP surgery? Is this a third party consultation? It's really important to write that down. Now, today is my telephone clinic, so I'm going to choose telephone consultation. Go to history, and this is where you're basically typing in the history. Right, so once you have finished the history, if relevant, you might want to add in an examination. And to do that, you just click on examination here on the left hand side. So this is a telephone consultation, so I won't really be putting anything in here. But if this was a face to face appointment and it was relevant, I might put in some observations here. So temperature. And as you can see, as you put in temp, you can actually choose tympanic temperature and you can pop that in here. And that just actually adds a code, which isn't that important at the moment, but it's just signaling something that we can talk about in the future. And again, same thing oxygen levels will probably be okay as well. So normally I will put my plan in the comments section. So click on comment and here's the plan. Right, and that's pretty much the end of the data input bit. Now, something that is super important before you finish your consultation, make sure that you add a problem. And as you can see on the right hand side, there will be a list of problems here that you can potentially add. Because if you have already spoken about anxiety and depression, for instance, make sure that you follow that thread. As you get used to EMIS, you will understand why that is important. But at this point, just make sure that you add something. And if you don't know what the diagnosis is, that's fine. You can add something generic like abdominal pain, but if you add that problem, the next time you see the patient, you will be able to follow that thread. And that is really useful for continuity of care. You can see on the right hand side, anxiety state. I'll double click that. And that will automatically add the problem. If you are done, just click on save. And that will save to the patient record. Now, if you go back to your appointment book, if you have finished with the patient, just click on L. 
and that will cross them off just to signal that you have already seen this patient. And when you are ready for the next one, double click on the next patient. And if it is a telephone consultation, click A to arrive them. If it's not, your receptionist will arrive them for you, right? And same thing, just click S and then you'll be able to start seeing them. Now, if you have changed your mind and you actually don't wanna see this patient yet, to cancel that, just click on C and that will revert them back to the previous state that they were in, so A for instance. Now let's show you a few different other things that you can do with patients. Now if I want to prescribe some medication, what I need to do is go to the medication tab on the left hand side, click on that. Now at this point, all you need to do is start putting in the name of the medication and click on it. You will get some warnings that you sometimes just need to override if you're happy with that. And sometimes you will actually get some suggestions in terms of dosage. Now, in this video, I showed you how to access the BNF whilst you are prescribing medication. If you do want to, <laughs> just make sure you have a look. Right, so she needs one to be taken twice a day. And if I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna click on issue. Now at this point, you can see that right here it says NHS printed script, non-EPS. So that means if I click approve and complete, it will print it out in my room. But nowadays we're sending prescriptions electronically and I'm gonna show you what that looks like on a real patient. So as you can see here, this patient is linked up with a pharmacy and it says EPS direct to main pharmacy. And these are the details of the pharmacy. If I click approve and complete, then that prescription will go directly to the pharmacy, which is probably the best way to go about things nowadays. Now let's say we want this patient to have blood test. Now to be honest, at this stage, what I would personally do is write in the comments. And basically what I would tell the patient is to just go to the desk and say that Dr. Michael wanted me to have some blood tests and let the receptionist organize that for you. Now finally, let's say we want this patient to have an ultrasound. All practices are different in terms of how you would request an ultrasound. I would just delegate that task to the secretaries and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now you go up to this icon, which says add new user task. By and large, most practices will have a secretary group set up already for you. So when you go down to task type, just go to referral. And as you can see, this is going to be sending this task to the secretary group. And I will write here, ultrasound KUB. Again, prior to starting your shift, you're gonna ask a few questions. And one of them is how can I request investigations? And they'll tell you, but this is the simplest way if no one has told you, and you want to make sure that that task stays in the system. Now, if you want to make it urgent, make sure you click on urgent and then click send. Now I'm gonna show you something that's really important as well. Let's say that you actually are not happy with this consultation and you wanna start it all over again. Right next to the save button, there's a cancel button and that's really important. The last thing I'll mention here is there's also a next problem button. Now in this video, I showed you guys that our practice is not a one problem, one appointment practice. So this is a button that I'll be clicking quite often. So there's one more thing that you might wanna do for your patient or that your patient might ask you. Is they might ask you for a sick note. Another video that I have, <laughs> obviously I have a lot of tutorials here. Uh, it shows you exactly how to do a sick note, but just very quickly, you just click on add fit note, not fit for work. It will automatically pre-populate the problem that you need. And again, if you click on print, it will print out in your room. Now here's something that's really important when you are going through medication. If you go to the medication tab, you can see a list of all the medication that this patient has had prescribed recently. And these are all the drugs on the patient's repeat prescription. Now, a really important button to familiarize yourself with is current slash past. So if you click on this, this will come up with a list of all the drugs the patient has ever been prescribed in their life. And that's really, really useful if say they want to create that they had a few years ago, but they don't remember what it is. You can probably find it in here. So something that is also really useful is let's say we want to see what investigations this patient has had. And to do that, you just go up to the investigations tab. Most frequently, you will see blood tests in here for things like x-rays, ultrasounds. Typically, you will have a program like Docman who will have a list of all those documents for you. And the cool thing about these investigations is that if you click on the ALT, for instance, it will show you a trend and all of the previous ALTs that this patient has had. So that's really awesome, right? That's it guys, I hope that was informative and hopefully that will get you through your session as a locum or maybe your first day as a new starter. Now, if you would like me to go into a lot more detail about EMIS in terms of inboxes and tasks and labs, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll start working on a new video for you. Finally, you can also email me directly. Otherwise, good luck.